Hello! So, uh, this one might be a little bit of a surprise. Um... Yeah, so I've been threatening to do this one for a couple weeks now. I just recently finished this for the first time. And it turns out this has a mod too, so... Here we are. You know, like... Friggin' super Japanese into this Game of Thrones over here. Oh, that's a Chinese story. <laughs> like, Japanese stylings with kind of a Chinese setting. Hmm. Except for the medieval European castles and stuff. <laughs> so... Taking bets on how many people survive to the end of the story. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Sudoken, well, Sudoken, I always call it Sudoken uh, 2. I uh, just recently experienced this for the first time. It actually kind of blew my mind a bit because I wasn't expecting it to be nearly as good as people were hyping it up to be. But, uh, it's basically like a culture mishmash, Buster Cluck, uh, war opera, Game of Thrones kind of a thing. Um, the hardcore mod changes, well, the overall balance of a lot of things. And just because the original game, well, it wasn't exactly difficult, per se. Like, it was very well, uh, well paced and told and everything else, and... Yeah, the difficulty, um, I think there were only two fights that I actually had any sort of issue with. The rest were pretty much just, like, one off and done. So, this one's pretty much gonna be, uh, one of the mods that goes by Iron Man rules. Uh, just gonna keep on going with it until first game over, and that'll be that. Because, uh, from what I've tried of it so far, really good mod. Also, best character ever right there. Freaking Doge. Also, wow, there was a lot more to this intro than I thought. Actually thought it kind of ended back there with Luca looking all crazy. Hmm. Oh well. Any darn ways? Where's my friggin' mouse to actually click on this thing? There we go. <laughs> we will be potato. <laughs> Arguably, I should, but not gonna. Be. So turn down that volume a little bit, because it's kind of blowing my eardrum out. So yeah, this is like a... Uh, I would say unusual JRPG that pretends to be a strategy RPG every now and then. And um, kind of, sort of, does the whole like Persona thing, except in a much more low-key manner. Like, honestly, 90% of this thing is pretty much for flavor. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the war is basically supposed to be over here, so yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's have some plot. Sure, we're gonna go outside, because, uh... I honestly, first time through... I was like, okay, no, we're, like, in the friggin' military or whatever, it's, you just go straight to bed. There's no, let's wander around or whatever. Can I not get my menu? There we go. Friggin' fix this right away. Alright. So there's pretty much only two areas you can go. Yeah, so, go to sleep or he'll be mad. Yeah, so we probably totally should go do that. But this is their opportunity to, uh, this is the opportunity for you to explore, and they do this a lot of times, so that you don't necessarily get lost. Like, okay, there's a cliff up here, you know, the characters would probably already know their general location, but 
gives the player a bit of time to go around and take a look. And that's all well and good. All these guys are pretty much excited to be going home. I'm sure they'll definitely be doing that. <laughs> yep. I'm sure it's going to be a great day. You'll live to see it and everything. <laughs> yep. So there's your first sign that something's wrong. He was basically told, hey, you don't need to actually go watch your post. Let's go check out where his post was, then. Uh, you do. Not that you'll know about it. This guy wants to get it on with your sister, who's not your sister, because apparently every JRPG needs that. So he swears he saw something move, and then if you try to leave, well... Yeah, soldier guy runs off. That's not suspicious. Funny thing is, they actually give them different uniforms. Like, if you uh, look throughout the game, there's little subtle differences for all their uniforms. Like these guys, they're pretty much in, like a youth training center kind of a thing. <clears throat> so they just have the like rounded helmets, like a pretty basic vest on, like gloves and shoes and that's it. They're not particularly well armored or anything. You know, bare arms and everything. Uh, whereas the main soldier guys are in a roughly similar color. But then they have different helmets and different armor and everything, and then as you progress through, all the better and better ones get, like, different shades and different little bits and pieces added. Neat little touch. We'll go to sleep. I don't know what's with his weird little tiara thing, by the way. That's never explained. I was hoping they would, but they never do. At least as far as I've seen it, anyway. Oh gee, what a shame. A war broke out. <laughs> By the way, you get this over and over, every single time. Every time somebody leaves or joins, uh, they give you the little, here's their stats, and they've just joined thing again. It's a neat little touch. Oh, okay. It's funny because at this point, you can kind of see this story from two different perspectives, right? Because if you go to the left, I, honestly, I completely forgot what direction he was talking about, and I went around examining everything, and figured, okay, he ran that way, that must be where the fighting is, so we're gonna frickin' bail and go this way. And if you end up going this way, uh, he basically comes up and asks why you didn't leave. And so my thought the whole time was like he was just unwilling, you know, he was kind of unwitting in the whole thing. He didn't want... He was trying to save as many people as he could. But then you go this way and it's a completely different story. So... Escaping went well for those guys. So I kind of had a more sympathetic view to the guy uh, when I was going on the left path uh, the very first time around. You guys have some sucky armor if arrows are getting through that. So, the whole arrows going through armor thing, um... You see that a lot in a lot of, um, Asian stuff specifically. You see a, a lot more, you know, people getting killed off by arrows, and I kind of wonder if it's just due, just due to the armor choices that were around at the time. Because, uh, essentially... Well, there, there were a lot of different variants of different kinds of stuff, and in, in a lot of Asian countries, it was... Mm, for, like, the basic soldiers, their their armor and all that was uh, more of just, like, plates followed by nothing. And in Europe, it was more, like, male throughout kind of thing. It always seems like uh, in media from there, people are dying by arrows more often. I don't know. Might just be some, you know, lightsaber arrow thing, as they call it. They have to know that. Also, I just want to point out, Joey seems a lot more intelligent if you take the right, uh, the right approach here. If, if you go to the left, he just seems ridiculously blind, like, okay. They're a bit dead. They got double killed since we were here last. Why these two don't get ambushed, who knows? And no 
little help's coming. But yeah, so he's a massive... the captain guy is much more of a brown noser in this route. I mean, they're doing the same thing and planning the same thing, I'm just saying in terms of how it can be seen. This, by the way, is basically Joey's approach if you end up going left. Like, no, we have to go report to the guy like complete retards. Instead, he's like, no, let's just freaking leave because... Basically, they're obvious traitors. So I'm curious to see if the story changes going through, uh, going through this way. Like, if you end up going here in the first place, uh, you start trying to climb. I don't think you even get a chance to try climbing in this case. Yeah, no. Because he try and like, uh, Joey tries to climb in and he just falls right the hell down. And really, there's only one attack worth using uh, for this first fight. As far as I'm aware, you're actually invincible. Uh, there's a bit of an audio glitch. I don't know how to solve that. Seems to happen every time that sound is played. So uh, this immediately gives you a better idea of what, uh, what you're dealing with in terms of mechanics. There we go. So you get more unbalanced, you get blinded from hits and that sort of thing. Then but we're gonna go ahead and use the items anyway. In the base game, you would use one Unite attack, and then this entire party would pretty much be wiped. Uh, except for the commander, who takes an extra hit. Uh, and this, it's a little bit of a different story. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I want to say this is still ridiculous, but... Like, okay, <laughs> base game version of this? Like, then... Oh, dang, I want to do a lot more. Two years after the video. Like, these two are just kind of two rookies. They really shouldn't be able to take them. Nice. Yeah, that's a 60 in base game. That's 200 now. So, even though, like I said, there's not really a point. Actually, let's go ahead and use another one of those. It appears they get a lot more uses, too. It's like three uses for 60. Oh, they have, uh, sacrificials. That's what's going on. They're not in this at all. Okay, they missed their mission, I think so. <laughs> and they made a jump level 20! Which is a good sign. I'll we'll be right back. Uh, he actually attacks you directly, I believe, um... In the other route. So, guess there's no other way. Uh, no. <laughs> it's funny because in many ways he's the actual. I, I've heard this mentioned a few times, but he's the actual protagonist, and you're just kind of the support character that turns into the protagonist over time. But, uh...
Yeah, no. Not a huge fan of this whole you gotta respect your childhood friend there kind of thing. Also, I guess this guy's been wearing his, like, dorky tiara thing since he was a kid. But, um... I don't know. Every time that there's, like, a forced childhood character or whatever else, you're like, no, like this character, like this character. Like, every single time, like, no. I want to get rid of them as fast as possible. Don't want to tag along, dang it. I want to pick my own tag alongs. <laughs> I want all my generic units. I don't want any of these characterized people. What are you doing? Yeah, I know, it's a, it's a weird approach, but... Just always bug me. So, you know, they're personalizing, or not personalizing, characterizing everything silently here. Like how they do this. They're like, yeah, you know, they went to the military together, they were training together as kids. Cool stuff. They go off because it's, I guess, it's kind of like a Switzerland kind of thing where they get mandatory training. I guess a lot of Western Europe does that too, which makes sense. I mean, in many ways, then you know, at times I've thought about going into that sort of thing, like you know, would be a good skill set to have, but oh well. So we get picked up by mercenaries. Man, that headache effect looks weird in this one. I am particular. I don't know what happens if you say you're not. Also, this is just a hilarious name. And technically you're not anymore. Pretty much everything Joey does in the early game annoys me. Like, these guys are obviously okay. It's a very obvious thing that you got betrayed. And he still forces you to go back and, you know, figure stuff out more or less. So yeah, starts off with little stuff here and there. Not getting to the actual rebalance part of the game anytime soon. Ah, you're totally gonna live. Can never figure out if this thing is a guy or a girl or what. Like, what? what is he? If you happen to know, let me know, because... Like, it, it's unclear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really need to clean up a rope in a storeroom? <laughs> I think you get rated differently depending on how you put these away. Personally, I think, you know what? These people basically took you in after you got stabbed in the back. I think it's fair to assume good intentions on their part. Might as well be nice about putting their stuff away. Like, this is certainly no waterboarding or whatever else, so... 
So apparently, timing matters in some of these prompts. Now there's one character later on that apparently you're supposed to be able to save off of ridiculously specific conditions. But I'm never gonna 100% this, so... Eh. In case you forgot, they make them very obvious as far as what choice you're supposed to go with. I'm gonna try to skip through this as fast as possible. Okay, can't get that. Go back to the guy, or girl, or whatever the hell you are. Yes, we get Gengen. Due to the best. He's just friggin' War Corgi. <laughs> You're best character. Yeah, it's War Doge. Man, this little kid. Why? Like, we think it might be a little bit dangerous. Here, bring this child along. But no, he's mostly there because he has the, the uh, medicine rune. Eh, he even says the same line as always. Alright. <laughs> exactly, and he'll retain that title forever. <laughs> Okie doke, we are getting a weird lag on the overworld. That's nice. That's a fantastic sign. It's like walking through molasses. Alright, first off, I just want to get into a random fight here to figure out if, uh... Um... Random fight, please. There we go. I'm gonna take a look at this balance. Okay, you are still in crap shape. Wait a second, those guys are way later in the game. What are they doing here? I guess just everyone's gonna come with a sacrificial item, just... Come on. That's a good sign. Try attacking. Even a little child should auto-heal. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay, bye. That was horrifying. Um... Cool, can I... save? Okay. As you can see, it's a bit more unforgiving, which is... Which is good, because, well, it kind of needed it. Uh, problem is, um... It looks like you need to have that one grind fight with everybody, so... Eh, that overworld lag isn't looking too good, though, either. Fantastic. Uh... What? I... 
I've literally never actually seen what that game does. And that's how little it actually came up in base game. So it appears staying in a bed made him thirsty. Describe it. Hmm. Also, if you happen to know a solution for this overworld flag, that'd be dandy. Okay. So they just flat out can't fight. Neat. <laughs> Go over here and disconnect their balloons. Um, I'd like to be able to win a random fight, please. Awesome. Actually, wait a minute. Is the glitch still here? I think if you just save and leave, I... Uh... Uh, yep, yeah, no, everyone's healed now, but they still have Balloon. Dang it. Let me that now. You folks seem interesting. But they won't do anything. Okay. Yeah, circle the recruitable characters around. We can't do anything yet. Right, so we get flower. I'm sure you'll survive past the next few minutes. Okay, um, um... We have a problem. Alright, let's do that. Okay, I got an experimental idea. Outside, try to use the flame wall on something. See if that'll allow a fight to be won, or if that'll just end the run right here. It's like a remix of the theme. Seriously, though, you can run from everybody getting balloons attached to you. So it's a bit of a difficult mod, I will say that much. Anyway, um, I don't think that's even fair to count that as a loss, because what the hell even? I'm gonna have to look up how to fix that, because as far as I'm aware, there's no balloon healing items up to this point, or abilities for that matter. Anyway, see you next time.